guys, it's Libby, aka Libby the Developer, and we are back. We are learning today, guys. I teach you how to code the easy, simple, down to the nitty gritty, like the easiest way possible. That is how I teach coding. So, 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 so subscribe if you're into that kind of thing, and let's get going. Today we're talking GitHub. So I remember when I first started learning how to code, GitHub to me was, it was a little, um, it was a very foreign concept and it was a little hard to grasp in the beginning. I think maybe because of how it was explained um, because it really is a super simple concept. Um, and so here I am today to actually simplify it for you guys. So why would someone use GitHub? Let's see. Let's say we have person one and his name is John. Oh, let me use a different, that marker is not working. Give me one second. Do, 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 do. You guys know I'm a busy mom and programmer. I don't edit my videos. <laughs> so we have person one, his name is John. John lives in New York. And we have person two, his name is Peter. Peter lives in Los Angeles. John and Peter are friends and they want to build a pizza app. They want to build an app that allows someone to like build a virtual pizza, right? But they live in two different places. How the heck are they going to be able to code on their own computers and also like have it combine together? That's where GitHub comes into place, come into play. GitHub is a remote repository for all of the code. You can think of it as like a gumbo bowl. I'm Creole, so I'm going to say a gumbo bowl, maybe a chili bowl would be more appropriate for, for you guys. But imagine GitHub as a re repository filled with all of the code for the application. So a big bowl of gumbo or a big bowl of chili that has all of the pieces to it. John may put in the, the cheese and the sour cream and Peter may put in the chili and the seasoning and they put it all together into this one bowl and you have one complete bowl. Hope that makes sense. So essentially we have the repository with all of the code. This, my friends, is GitHub. There you go, you have GitHub, okay? So how does this work? So we have all of the code here. So most times how it works is you'll have a master branch. So what does that mean? A master branch typically holds all of the approved code for the project. So what do I mean by that? So let's say John has some code that he's adding to Peter's code that doesn't necessarily mean that all of that code is going to merge correctly, which you can then um, experience merge conflicts. Go with me. I'm going to get more into just keep following it. This will all make sense in the very end. So we have a master branch. Okay. We have a master branch. This is all of the approved code. So this master branch holds all of the approved code for the actual project. I'm trying to make sure that this makes all of the sense in the world. If not, please leave comments. So you have a master branch, a branch holds code, okay? Holds pieces of code. So we have a master branch, all of the code that has been approved, right? That's a separate entity from what I'm about to say right now. So John will, let's say John is creating a new button. So John will create a branch, he'll call it John Button, okay? And Peter is creating a branch for a new form he's creating. So you'll have a Peter form, okay? Now, John's new button and Peter's new form has to all eventually merge into this master branch. So what they would do is they would actually add this code into the master branch, right? But typically what you'll have 
outside of a master branch is a developer's branch, okay? I'm calling it a dev branch here. And the reason why you would not want to immediately put these two pieces of code directly into the master branch, because the master branch is like the perfect, pristine, that is the code. That's the Bible for the code. That's It's been tested, it's been tried, it's been true. Um, so typically what will happen is John would put his branch that holds his branch of code that holds all of the code for the new button he created he would put that into the developer branch now the developer branch would all already have like all of the working code so he may when he merges when he merges his code into the developer branch there may be conflicts there may be okay well you have a variable already with this name so that conflicts you can't have two variables with the same name or you know, this branch says that this is that, but your branch says this is this is that. So what John would do is John would add this code into the developer branch. After he adds it, he'll get a notification that there are merge conflicts. He would fix those merge conflicts by just going in manually. There's a way to do it automatically, but we're talking easy, simple. He would go in manually and just say, okay, I'm gonna remove this variable name. I'm gonna change this variable name. I'm gonna add this on You're merging, you're bringing everything together to make it cohesive. And then once everything is cohesive and copacetic and amazing and great, and it merges beautifully, and it's been tested and it works perfectly, then, this new developer branch that's now pristine and now has John's button would now be merged into the master branch. So now we have all of the master code. So all the code that's pristine and perfect and works beautifully. So you have your dev branch with like the working stuff and sometimes it's funky, you know, you may have a bug, you know, this is not pristine code, but you'll eventually do it into your master branch. So then Peter here says, hey, I created this form. I'm ready to add this into the application. So Peter would merge into the developer branch. He would add his code. He would attempt a merge into the developer's branch. And then he would say, oh, crap, there's some merge conflicts. Okay, let me fix those merge conflicts. Okay, merge conflicts are fixed. Let me go ahead and test the code, test the form, make sure the form works correctly, um, Make click around, make sure there aren't any bugs. Okay, cool, now that that works, now this new developer branch that now has all of the working code, plus John's button, plus Peter's form, and it all works beautifully and pristine and it's amazing, it now all gets pushed to the master branch. So that's how that works. Um, taking a step back, um, you know, say that Luis is now a new developer on the project. So what Luis would do is Luis would go into this re remote repository that has all of the pristine, amazing code. This is the final, 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 final version of the code, which is AKA the master branch. The master branch is all of the code that's approved and good to go for the project. Luis would go in and Luis would grab all of this code that's remote um, on a remote server and he would grab it and he would put it onto his local machine. So right now, Luis doesn't have any code to work with or to code with. So he would go to github.com slash whatever the name, uh, pizza projects. I don't know slash pizza project that holds all of this code and he would grab a link, a specific link that holds all of this code. He would open, he would go into his computer, he would open up his command prop or his ter terminal and he would run a git clone with that link. What he's doing is he's grabbing all of this code in a remote repository and he's cloning it all down into his local machine. So once he runs that git clone, now he has all of the code on his local computer. Now, all of the code that was on this remote server, all the code that was on github.com slash pizza project, all of the code that Peter and John had worked on, Luis now has it on his local computer. Is that a computer? <laughs> okay, so now that it's on his computer, he can code, he'll code, his do his, he'll do his thing, he'll do his 
thing. I'm like, all right, y'all, I created a new image to add to the website. Dope. Thanks for adding that image, Luis. Now, Luis is going to check out his branch. He's going to do a Git checkout. Git checkout Luis image. Okay, Git checkout Luis image. He's going to check out that branch. And then he's going to run a Git add. He's checking out a new branch here. And this is actually Git checkout dash B Luis image. Checking out his own fresh new branch. He's Git add. He's running a Git add. All is this dot get at all of the code that he just created for that image, and then he's going to commit the code into the branch. And you typically add a message, you'll say, So now that he has the checked out branch, he has his branch, it's an empty branch right now, there's no code. He's added all of the code for that image, he's committing it. He's saying, Okay, I commit to some put this um code into this branch within message. The message would probably say, like new image, right? So git commit dash in new image and then git push. At this point, he's pushing it all into this remote repository. So now he has a branch on this remote repository. Also, each of these um, repository, each of these branches are also in the remote repository. You have the master branch and that's dope, but there's also, you can always keep your branches remotely for just in case anyone ever just says, hey, cool, let me check out John's button to make enhancements or changes or anything like that. So you get pushed and he pushes it into the remote repository. So now all of his code for that new image is in the remote repository at this point. John and Peter can now go take a look at his code. So they can say, cool, let me go take a look at your code. It looks good. Submit a pull request, which is saying, hey, you submit a pull. So then now, now that Luis's new image code is in the remote repository, John and Peter in their respective places, they go into github.com slash pizza pizza project. And then they'll say, okay, that looks good. Go ahead and submit a pull request to put it into the dev branch because right now it's in his own separate branch so dope so Luis creates a pull request that says hey i'm requesting to put my code in the dev branch peter and john would approve that and then bam his code is now in the dev branch he can now merge it with all of their code for the button the form all of the existing code and then he'll he'll uh, take care of any merge conflicts there once this is good and pristine and tested and ready to go, then he would submit a pull request to then put it into the master branch. Once it's in the master branch, that is the application. Now all of their code, the uh, existing code that was already there, plus John's button, plus Peter's form, plus, plus Luis's image, all these people in, on separate sides of the country, they have now all of their code into one branch. I hope that helps y'all. Let me know if it does. Let me know if it doesn't. I'm happy to. And I'm also like, I'm not used to teaching or explaining. So let me know if I did a good job. Try to be really thorough. Anyway, subscribe for more content like this. Uh, like, comment, and thank you guys.